Hi, it's Jan Beter. And you might have noticed that I have a Twitch channel now where I occasionally stream uh, like um, games or software from original vintage hardware that I repaired on this channel. Um, there is a problem because I don't have a proper, real proper microphone. I'm using like an, an AKG uh, C1000S, which is like a, a hobbyist um, microphone that's not really, not really tailored to voiceover stuff. It's really an all-purpose uh, kind of mic that is also great for um, like instrument recordings and stuff. I bought that a while back to, to do home recording of music and stuff, but uh, I used it as a, my primary voiceover mic. Uh, my amazement as I found this on eBay, which is pretty decent uh, Rode NT-USB, which is a USB um, pretty decent mic that usually costs like 150 euros. Uh, found this for 50 euros, uh, paid a little bit of delivery, uh, it wasn't, wasn't that expensive. Um, this was advertised as having a loose contact on the USB um, jack that is located here. And as you can see there's already a hole in there because I took out the USB jack because the reason there was a loose contact was basically that it was broken. Um, the legs of the USB were broken off internally and I'm going to show you how to get into this thing and I am going to replace the connector. And I already double checked that this is actually a working microphone. The only thing that was broken was the connector, so that's going to be pretty much Hopefully a very quick uh, and easy repair, just soldering on some legs onto a little PCB. And yeah, let me show you how I do this and then uh, test this if it actually is a working decent mic that I d then can use for upcoming streams and voiceovers for YouTube videos. Which would be amazing because I'm always, as you probably know, I'm always on a budget and even though I have a lot of... Uh, a lot of followers and a lot of subscribers and a lot of um, Patreon supporters and there's quite a lot of money there. Most of it goes to like um, spare parts, stuff to show on the channel like computer systems, uh, the, the rent for this room I'm filming this in, the extra rent I can only afford because of my Patreon supporters. Um, yeah, there, there's like half of the Patreon money goes directly into the rent for this, so um, it's not that much. It seems much, but it's not. It's still a lot for me because I don't have much otherwise, so um, thank you all very, very much for supporting me. But I couldn't afford a proper mic for, for this stuff um, for a while, and now I think I have one, so just a little repair work to put in, which I can easily do, hopefully, uh, and then I'm gonna have a proper mic. So here's the um, broken USB jack. It's just a standard, uh, I think these are A type uh, USB jacks. Um, this has four little pins on the back side. It's meant to be um, standing on a PCB, but in this case it was mounted like the PCB was between, sandwiched between the pins and the pins were soldered from both sides to the PCB. Um, and they just broke off. So it made contact if you had it at the right angle and if you held it there, it made contact and you could actually see that the microphone was working. Um, but when I opened it I saw that this was just completely broken off. So let's get inside and put a new USB jack in. And by the way this came with the whole box of uh, the original packaging which has like a microphone stand, like a 6 meter USB cable and um, like a, a pop filter that directly mounts to the microphone. All pretty neat and, and it wasn't even advertised, I would, have, I would still have thought this is a bargain if this wasn't, uh, wasn't coming with the microphone. So nice, very nice, very nice. I hope I can get this fixed <laughs> easily. So if you are following my channel uh, closely and for a while, you probably know that I used to work as an audio guy, uh, audio engineer, and I had to do with quite some microphones. Usually, they are like they are like um, uh, shaped like a pipe, and they are screwed together. And in this case, this is also screwed. Um, this is like a ring that comes off. There's you can see 
that it's screwed on. The, it has little holes. There are probably proper tools for this, but I'm just using two screwdrivers uh, <laughs> to put them in there, which works pretty well. You just can use two screwdrivers on opposite ends and turn it. This works even when it's uh, tightly screwed on. So you can just remove this with some patience. And there's a little um, plastic seal kind of thing that sits in there. And now you could take this apart if it wasn't for the buttons here, for the um, knobs, the volume knob and the uh, mix mixing of a microphone and uh, this acts as a sound card basically, so you can mix the microphone sound, the direct monitoring sound. These pull off, they just pull off, but they are so tightly in there that I had to use the screwdriver and I stretched the, the case a bit, but that doesn't matter much to me. There's prob probably better ways to do this, but uh, I scratched it a bit underneath there and you can get them out pretty easily. Just levering them out with the screwdriver. Could use something else. I tried the plastic uh, sputter thing, but it wasn't strong enough actually. So now that you have these out, you can just take off this part and have direct access to the PCB. And there's another little screw here that is like holding which is pretty good design actually. I don't know how somebody managed to destroy this. Here's a little screw. Um, that's holding the connector in place. And the connector is sitting on this little PCB that just uh, just has a connector that's fitted to the main PCB. There you go. That's where it broke. That's a pretty interesting construction. So we have to solder our new connector on here. That's the, the pins of the original connector. And they're just soldered to this PCB. <laughs> so we have to desolder these and solder on the new connector. And then we can uh, put this into this connector on the board and have this sit in there. And then it should be 100% fixed again, hopefully. <laughs> I think we have to we have to take off the whole PCB to reasonably get it back in with the connector soldered onto the board, otherwise we would have to turn this to get it in there, because there's only a small opening. But I think the whole PCB comes off with like two screws. And there's another uh, of these connectors for the microphone capsule. So that's pretty nice design. In general, Rode makes pretty good stuff for um, reasonable money. It's well worth the money, in my experience. One of the first microphones I bought when I um, worked as an audio engineer was the Rode um, vocal mic, which was pretty inexpensive and still was pretty good. And that was like 2001, I guess, <laughs> something like that. That's a while back. <laughs> So these are uh, these are even better than the one that was in there. These are like um, good brand USB jacks. So it's going to be better than it original wa originally was, I guess. Uh, yeah, hopefully. I hope these are the same size. But they are. They are pretty pretty much the same size. And I bought two new ones so I can screw one up. <laughs> So let's remove the solder from the little uh, That was kind of easy. So now let's make sure we do this in the right orientation. Uh, this is like this cutout has an orientation like this. Yeah. So it should be soldered on like so. So I'm just aiming for uh, 
the middle of the... So I'm starting with one pin so that I uh, can adjust it a bit still. Because we want this to be as centered as possible, I think. Like so, maybe. So just held it in place a bit. Yeah, looks pretty nice. This is the, the only thing that is not very nicely designed, I guess. This USB jack um, sitting directly on this. I mean, there's a screw to support it, but uh, yeah, this is sitting pretty. These solder joints easily break, I guess, if, if there's some stress on the USB connector, even though it's secured in with a screw. Uh, yeah, that's pro that's basically it. So we have to have to take out the um, circuit board here, I guess, so we can fit the little daughter board easier. Let's do that. Like a bigger screwdriver here. Yeah. I should probably use my because I have it. I should use my um, ESD thing over here. So well, okay. So we can lift this a bit. Which probably makes sense. Hmm. How do we get this together? I think we have to put in the this first. Yeah. That's, that's the way. And then push it through. Uh, I think these standoff thingies have to be bent inside. So we can fit this. So we're bending the, these fl flush with the rest of the casing there. And we can put this inside. Yep. Should fit. And then we can. Put this again, connect the little connector there, <laughs> make sure that it doesn't fall out again. <laughs> so there we go. And we can fit this inside this connector here. Yep. And then we can screw it back in. And we're done. That's it. That's probably the, the whole repair. That was kind of easy. And I mean, I'm like, this is like a 100 euro repair, basically. I mean, this saves me 100 euro. And I wouldn't even have considered buying this thing because it's a 150 euro machine. For 50 euros, this is a real bargain. And I don't think it's necessary to recap this yet, because it's pretty recent. <laughs> so, just putting in the, the little security screw there. So, just putting this in there. Tightly. Yeah, looking good. Okay, let's put it back together. Or maybe test it before we put it back together. We'll put it together halfway and then test it, okay? I'm always a bit impatient with stuff like this because I'm really excited to get this for as little money as it costs. So, there we go. Ring. And it doesn't look too bad. The new. Uh, jack in there and like the the stand that comes with it screws on as well which is which is it's pretty neat design I think the only thing I saw that is not that neat is that the um, stand is made of plastic so it breaks off easily if you put weight on it okay so that's basically it let's uh, test this thing so here's a USB cable Plugs it really nicely. And there's 
a little purple LED that tells me that the microphone is actually on and working. Nice! Okay, let's test. So I have this connected to my little MacBook here and as you can see, uh, I'm getting closer to the mic and it totally works. It's like, it's a totally working mic. Uh, <laughs> Which is pretty nice, uh, that wasn't a very hard repair if you know what you're doing. So if you're looking for something like this, uh, yeah, just look for loose contacts and stuff like that, you know you can fix, most likely. If I wouldn't have been able to fix this, I probably would have sold it for like the same amount of money again as a broken unit. And uh, give somebody else the chance to try and fix it. But yeah, this is... A working Rode USB microphone uh, that I got for 50 euros and like uh, one euro maybe for the little uh, USB jack that I bought as a spare. Nice! Yay! So here's a more proper test run of the Rode USB and I'm not using the pop filter so you will probably hear some pop noises. <laughs> That's why it's called a pop filter. test run of the Rode USB and I'm not using the pop filter so you will probably hear some pop noises. <laughs> That's why it's called a pop filter. Yay! Winner! So this was a success. Um, thanks for watching. This is not the usual content of this channel. This is like a special thing for here. But usually I'm concerned with uh, vintage audio and old computers, repairs and electronics of all kinds. Uh, I also have a Twitch channel, that's why I wanted this in the first place. So, um, yeah, thanks very much for watching. Hope to see you on this channel again. If you like this, uh, maybe consider subscribing. If you want to give me some support and make more like this possible, consider supporting me on Patreon. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching. So much for now. I'm Jan Beta. See you next time. Bye! So this was a success, um, thanks for watching, this is not the usual content of this channel, this is like a special thing for here, uh, yeah, thanks for watching, so much for now, I'm Beta. see you next time, bye!